Hey everyone, welcome to my library. My name is Melissa and we are going to attempt a weekend reading vlog. Yay! I know guys, I know it's been a long time since I have filmed a vlog. Um, too long. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we are going to attempt it. Um, and actually, if I'm being 100% transparent, it is Wednesday. But... Um, I think I will have some fun things kind of planned for this weekend, so I wanted to film this now so that I could remember to film all those things later. Um, but anyways, I have been home alone this week. Um, my husband has been in New York on a business trip, and so I, it's just been me and the dogs. And of course, with that being said, I've had a lot of time to read, and... <laughs> have gotten extremely distracted by things. Uh, it's been embarrassing, honestly. So first off, I got distracted because I started watching this show called The Vineyard, which is on Amazon Prime. It's in Spanish, but what I did was I played it in its normal Spanish. I didn't have English dub. And then I had the English subtitles and it was impeccable, amazing one of my favorite period dramas that's recently come out. Um, I love trying to find new um, period romances. So something uh, something akin to Pride and Prejudice or Sense and Sensibility or um, North and South, what, something like that, a miniseries historical vibe. And this definitely fit that, that vibe. It is about two people who are, um, one of them is a woman who her family owns a winery. That's their entire dynasty, essentially. Um, she even gets married off to this older gentleman, basically to unite two rival businesses into one. Um, and so she gets sent from Spain to go live with her British husband. And then the other, um, character is, a uh, a character he is from Spain but then moved to Mexico um, and he basically built himself up after he struck gold but he struck silver and found um, silver at a mine that he acquired um, kind of through a bet or something I can't remember how he acquired this mine but he he thought it was worthless and took a really big risk trying to excavate it and then found silver and anyway so these two people grow up really um trying to make their lives better and then um essentially like 20 years later it's the happenings of how their two lives come together um basically through family ties and through a lot of um intrigue and um people trying to go behind their backs and screw them over or um, bring their family down or ruin their lives <laughs> but these two people these two um these two characters are just so such good people i don't know how to describe it but they're such good characters and then they end up falling in love there's a ball scene that they dance slow motion which we always love i am so here for those scenes um, the music was amazing too, and, and just the overall visuals, uh, it was just beautiful. Of course, with being, you know, about wineries and vineyards, beautiful scenery. So, I highly recommend. Um, this is a picture of it, a poster. I probably displayed it before this time, but yes, definitely check it out. Okay, so with that rant over, <laughs> um, I'm actually planning on reading tonight until I have to go pack, pick up my husband um, around 9.30. Um, I was gonna watch the Olympics, but I don't know. I watched the Olympics the past two nights and I just need a break and want to read, so it's fine. I'll catch up with highlights later. <laughs> but, um, so what am I reading? So the, the two books I am reading, one of them you guys already know about, it's Paint the Wind by Kathy Cash Spellman, The Step Back so awesome <laughs> um yeah i am really far in i'm so excited i'm about halfway or more than halfway i'm literally 400 pages in um of like an 800 page book so yeah 
halfway. <laughs> um, but things are getting getting crazy with this story. It is a soap opera. Like, it feels like watching a Western Downton Abbey, honestly. Um, <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it, but basically it's about this woman named Fancy who um, she ends up, her whole goal in life and like all she's ever wanted is to become rich and become, um, a woman of her own and um, make herself like make her own way in the world I guess and anyways she ends up meeting these two brothers um, when she's younger um, and helping uh, mine with them um, and like pander for gold um, and then what I, what happens is there's this major drama that happens between them those three um, when she kind of ends up selecting one of them i guess is how to say it and then uh she ends up leaving them because she can see that she's ruining their lives and their relationship together and um she ends up going to live at this this uh saloon that's slash like a whorehouse basically and the woman there that owns it um she's a sh she is such a bad a but she's so cool um she definitely has a lot more depth to her and um so yeah so she lives with her for a while and then um she ends up meeting a gentleman there and um going back to his estate in i think it's london or is it New York? No, 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 New York. Um, because she ends up wanting to be an actress and meets him there in New York, that's what happens. So then she's in New York and she's with this rich old guy. <laughs> and then uh, she ends up deciding she doesn't wanna be his mistress anymore and um, wants to head back west, back to pursue a business venture with Jewel, the saloon owner. And so she goes back west and now she's back west and has met up again with these two brothers who are now rich. Um, they both made it. Um, they, what did, what happened? How did they become rich? Now I forgot. Uh, oh, I, sh I should remember these things. But one of them is a gambler. I know he made it rich just by gambling, but I can't remember the other one. But anyways, so they're rich and um, she's back to... Um, having her flirta flirtations with both of them and it's crazy <laughs> if you can't tell there's a lot going on in this book it's awesome though i'm here for it i'm here for the drama um it's it's also incredibly well written that's the thing that i love too is um kathy cash spellman really knows how to describe settings she knows how to um really just make a story make it epic um it is definitely epic <laughs> so so yeah i'm really enjoying my time with this one and then okay here's what happened i was reading our darkest night by jennifer robson and i was halfway through which i think was like 200 pages maybe and i just kind of got super bored with it i don't know if it's gonna be a dnf or just a De like I'm setting it down for now but it was really slow and I didn't think anything g was amazing about the writing the writing honestly was kind of just blah um to be quite frank uh so I didn't really like the characterization of anybody it seemed very dr it seemed very it's kind of ironic because I'm talking about how crazy this book is and how dramatic it is but at the same time, the writing was so is so well done that I can go with it. But with something like Our Darkest Night, um, it just seems very surface level to me. Um, the characters seem very like black or white kind of deal where the main guy, his name is Nico. Um, he was he was on his way to be a priest when um, he ends up being kind of recruited by one of his fellow priests to help this woman um, escape the ghetto, the Jewish ghetto, and pretend that he married her. So, um, 
so that's what's happening and he he just seems very he seems too good to be true but like in not in a like cinnamon roll hero kind of way like it's like okay like yeah you of course you're gonna say that compliment of course you're gonna do this extra good deed to some random kid of course you're gonna help the old lady blah blah like there's just so many things that happen in the book that I'm kind of like I know this is trying to make us love him but it's just too much for me I just think it's like kind of unbelievable um and very surface level I don't feel any depth to any of these characters or this story so yeah I just put it down I was just not feeling it um and I really this is what happened honestly I watched um the silkworm episodes of CB Strike on TV, um, which is a uh, reenactment of the Cormoran Strike books, and loved it. <laughs> loved the chemistry between the two, between Strike and Robin, and I just kept thinking about it. And so I finally was like, you know what? We're gonna pick up the next book. I don't even care that it's been like less than two weeks since I read the second book. Um, if I'm this excited about a series, I just want to keep going with it. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm reading the third book, Career of Evil. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm actually almost 200 pages in now um, and loving it. So here's like the movie tie-in edition that I think is awesome. Um, it's extra floppy too. I love it. And I got it for super cheap, if you can't tell, six bucks. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is really good. I am actually going even further with it though. I am using, you guys are gonna laugh. I'm using a highlighter to highlight every time I think something is super cute between the two characters. <laughs> because that way it keeps me really engaged in the story. Um, and the mystery element of it is not why I'm reading it, but it helps me get that whole story with me being so involved in highlighting um so like honestly it's kind of hilarious but i i do have like highlights sprinkled throughout the book with moments between the two where eh, you can't really tell on camera huh but um just moments between the two characters where it, it's showing their feelings for each other in very subtle ways i'm talking seriously subtle um so yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I'm having a ball though, guys. I am loving it. It's been such a fun thing to get back into like annotate, annotating romance <laughs> in books. I don't know. Has anyone else done that? I did that in Harry Potter too. Um, I, w I would tab the book for every, um, every moment between Hermione and Ron that I thought was cute. And then also a different color tab for every um, Snape and Lily moment, which didn't happen hardly at all, except for one big chapter. <laughs> but honestly, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of a weird thing I love doing. I don't know if anyone else can relate, but that's it. So yeah, those are these are the two books I plan on reading this weekend, and we'll keep you guys posted on how it goes. Um, I even have my cheese and crackers little snacky snacks to read while i read right now um and also an energy drink because i just woke up from a nap and i'm just like feeling a little bit groggy um probably not recommended at 5 p.m <laughs> but i don't know whatever i'm not gonna think twice about it so yeah those are the plans and we'll see you in the next clip <music> Friday morning I'm getting ready <laughs> um, and I thought I'd just turn on the camera and talk about the book I'm currently listening to I usually listen to audiobooks as I am getting ready um, it's basically the only time that I do listen to audiobooks unless I'm driving um, which will probably happen more frequently um, come September because that's when my my company that I work for has announced that they'll try 
migrating back into the offices, what that's going to look like, no one knows, but it's unfortunate. I love working from home. Um, but anyway, so I am, I am listening to Slightly Wicked by Mary Balog. Um, this is number two in her Slightly series. And uh, I just finished Slightly Married last week and immediately checked this one out from Libby. So um, I'm, I'm enjoying it, but not as much as Slightly Married, um, mainly because the plot for it is really hard to believe, really hard. <laughs> like I have to suspend my disbelief because basically the premise is it's about... Um, the the third son, Ranolph Bedwin, who on his way to visit his grandma, who him and his grandma have a very close relationship, but on his way to visit his grandma, um, he ends up running into a carriage that has been like turned over essentially. And um, he ends up meeting Judith who is was on this carriage when it flipped and she was like helping other people and stuff he ends up meeting her on his way to help these people and she pretends that she is an actress and so she goes by a, a fake name he goes by a fake name too because he doesn't want her to think that um he's some sort of rich duke son that he is <laughs> and so they end up having this while he um there there's this storm that comes through and so everyone is um essentially forced to stay at this like village nearby and so everyone at the village um or everyone that was capsized from the carriage is at the village he ends up having this one night stand essentially with her i mean it's three nights but they just have this um big flirtatious crazy three nights together and then um go on their merry way and he's under the he's under the impression that she's this actress and she actually is amazing at acting um but in reality she is a pastor's daughter and um so anyways once they part ways they they don't want to part ways but she ends up deciding it, it would just be better for her too because she knows that he he's way out of her league, essentially, as far as like wealth goes. So they part ways, but then of course their ways cross again because she is, um, her grandma and his grandma are like best friends. They were both traveling to the same tiny town in the same, basically within like a five mile radius of each other, these two houses. And so she ends up, um, meeting him again and he learns that I mean she kind of shows up as someone who has like a cap on her head to hide her unruly red hair and um, she's kind of played off as like almost like a uh, what's the word not a miss not a mistress what is the word that I'm looking for um, like an old maid essentially a spinster and so everyone thinks she's this spinster because she dresses horribly and all of her siblings treat her like she's just kind of this pawn. And um, anyway, so he doesn't really recognize her when they first meet, which I think is so unrealistic. <laughs> like you can tell even when someone's wearing a hat or whatever, you can tell based on their face and their eyes who they are. But then he does recognize her and it goes from there. And so it's like their romance after they've shared these three crazy days and nights together. And so um, they're just kind of facing, well, and he's being set up with her sister. And so um, these grandmas are wanting him to court her sister who's like actually come out and like is part of society. Um, but he's obviously falling for Judith instead. So that's the whole conflict right now. I just think it's so unrealistic. I don't know, I'm, it's good. And I really like Mary Bellog's writing. And that's what's really keeping me going. And of course, Rosalind Landor narrating it is my queen. 
but um but yeah it's it's very unrealistic uh but i'm i'm just going with it it's i'm going with it and it's a ride so um anyways i need to finish my mascara oh it's hard to talk and do mascara i picked the wrong time to turn on the camera um anyways <laughs> So, um, plans for my day, it's Friday, so um, I am just gonna finish up work. I'm gonna film an August TBR, which I think is so funny because I haven't been filming TBR, recent, TBR videos recently, but there's a lot of books in the works in my plans for August, so I figured why not. <laughs> um, so I hope you guys enjoy that video, but um, yeah, I'm gonna film that as well. And then um, date night tonight, I'm hoping I can convince my husband to go to this vintage bookstore I haven't been to in a long time. I'm specifically looking for these two editions of War and Peace I've seen there a couple times. They've just been in the back of my mind as like those two beautiful illustrated um, editions that I've heard the translation is the best as well, um, is what I wanna go with when I finally tackle that book. So, um, I want to see if they still have it. I, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers, but I also know War and Peace is one of those books that I'm sure vintage and used bookstores count on to sell. So it probably has been sold, but we'll see. That's my, that's my plan, um, for today. And other than that, um, watching the Olympics, I've been watching so much Olympics. Honestly, it's been so distracting from reading. Um, I haven't gotten hardly any reading done, but it's been really fun to watch. Um, finally, it's kind of moved from swimming to track and field, which is my preferred sport to watch over the two. Um, but I actually really love watching beach volleyball, normal volleyball, men's and women's. Those are my two favorite. And then um, kind of the one-off random sports are really fun too, like table tennis and badminton. Um, but anyways, it's been awesome. I've really enjoyed it. Um, gymnastics was major drama <laughs> um, with Simone Biles backing out. I mean, I completely understand why, but um, it was very exciting to watch Suni Lee win gold. That was awesome. So anyways, uh, that is the end of this clip. <laughs> um, I will check in with you guys if I have any updates on my reading. We'll see how it goes. So I forgot to show you guys um, what my husband brought back from New York City. Uh, I just really briefly mentioned if he was ever bored, he could go and pop by the strand for me, <laughs> um, which he took that hint. He took that hint. <laughs> and so he uh, actually, he walked literally from the top of Manhattan to the bottom one day. He just felt like walking. And so um, he ended up stopping by the Strand and of course got me something. Um, he ended up getting me these socks, which he knows how much I love coffee, tea, hot drinks. So he got me these awesome socks. I'm a major um, socks collector. I don't know how to say that right, but I love getting socks for gifts. Um, I get socks from literally every Every person that's ever assigned to me for like Secret Santa or anything from family, they always end up getting me socks because they know how much I love wearing them. Um, I'm one of those weird people that wears socks to bed. Yeah, I'm just always wearing them. So even in the middle of summer, I'll have socks on. Uh, so yeah, so he got me these socks. And then um, I think these are just given with every single purchase at the Strand. But I have another bookmark that is the exact same as this one. So I think that's why <laughs> I know that, but, uh, but yeah, so a bookmark as well. Um, but yeah, I was excited that he surprised me with a little something from, um, a favorite stop I've had, <laughs> um, a favorite bookstore of mine. Um, I mean, it's very classically famous. Um, it's one of those iconic bookstores worldwide, but love it. So yeah, just thought I'd share that.
am sitting out here enjoying the sunshine, a beautiful day. Um, and anyways, I'm reading Career of Evil still. And you guys, the chemistry is so good. Um, so they have been um, spending a lot more time together because um, they needed to travel way outside of London and do kind of like an overnight stay. Um, so they went to the travel lodge to get um, situated. They're both in relationships, very rocky relationships. So it's not like that's the thing that's very much a, still a wedge between them. But I just have to read this because it's epic. <laughs> they were given rooms five doors apart in the travel lodge. Robin had dreaded the man behind the desk offering a double room, but Strike had headed that off with a peremptory two singles before he had time to open his mouth. Ridiculous, really, to feel suddenly self-conscious because they had been physically closer all day in the Land Rover than they were in the lift. It felt odd saying goodnight to Strike when she reached the door of her room, not that he lingered. He merely said night and walked on to his own room, but he waited outside his door until she managed to work the key card and let herself inside with a flustered wave. Why had she waved? Ridiculous. <laughs> Anyways, and then it goes on and just it talks about Robin getting into her room and how she's just furious with her um, her fiancé right now about something. I won't spoil it, but um, anyways, it says, Strike, meanwhile, had not yet made it into bed. He was stiff all over from the long hours of immobility in the car. It felt good to, take, to get the pros prosthesis off. He's um, actually, he is... Uh, his leg is cut off so I didn't I don't know if I've ever mentioned that detail but it's really cool um, reading about how he manages to work through that um, anyway so then it says lying with his hands behind his head he stared up at the dark ceiling and thought about Robin lying five rooms away he wondered whether Matthew had texted again whether they were on the phone together whether she was capitalizing on her privacy to cry for the first time all day isn't that so good? I know it's very subtle, but you can tell that they really care about each other um, and that there is a little spark there. Hopefully you guys can tell that. I mean, I definitely can. Um, and that's what I've been like highlighting throughout this whole book. But uh, yeah, I just thought I would chime in with this cute little scene from this book. Um, I'm loving it. So I realized I never updated and showed you guys what I got from the bookstore over the weekend. Um, so I thought I would quickly do that. The dogs are going nuts. <laughs> I have Butter over here and Lily over here. Um, so let's see how this clip goes. This is what happens when I decide to um, film when I'm sitting on the ground. <laughs> Things just get out of hand. Um, but anyways, so let me show those books off um, before I close this this reading vlog out. So uh, yes, I know I mentioned that I wanted those War and Peace volumes I kept thinking about that were in the back of my mind, and they still had them. I was so excited. Um, so yeah, so these are the two volumes. It's the uh, revised mod translation that I've heard is the best one. Um, so I've heard that from Steve Donahue and then some other booktubers I follow who read classics a lot. So I decided to go with that. Um, and then additionally, the reason why I really wanted these books specifically is I will show you. So this is the cool like cover that comes with it. These were 35 bucks total, um, which is an amazing deal for like how high quality these books are. Um, I'm stoked. <laughs> but anyways, the cool thing about this is it is illustrated. So it has these amazing illustrations that are two, two pages that are like folded in um, in various points in the story. Isn't that amazing? I just think it's so, so cool um, to have these illustrations to look at as I read. Um, it's just going to keep me motivated to keep going, I think. I'll show another one off. Um, 
It is just amazing. I love it so much. Um, so yeah, so I really, this is the reason why I wanted um, these additions were because of these cool illustrations that are happening. Um, and they're even titled too, like it says, The Duel in the Snow for this one that I think I just showed. Yeah, I just showed this one. Um, so yeah, just amazing, beautiful detail with these two, these two volumes. So when I finally do commit and read War and Peace, um, it will definitely be in these editions, and I'm just so excited that I found them. Oop, <laughs> one was turned upside down. So yeah, um, these were the two that I was definitely wanting. And then um, I had so many other books that I was thinking about buying from that store. It is one of my favorite bookstores of all time. They have such amazing selection of both old school books, collectibles, vintage, and then also more um, new books as well. Um, but anyways, I, I had about 10 books stacked up for me to choose from, but I am definitely trying to be a lot more selective in the books I am buying and picking up because I'm running out of shelf space. So um, the only other book that I picked up from the bookstore, I just could not resist. Um, is this one. So it's the Everyman's Library Edition of Jane Austen's lesser known works. So it's got Sanditon in it and then it's got other stories. So um, what other books does it have in here? Let's see. It's got Sanditon, The Watsons, Lady Susan, and then in part two it's got The Juvenilia and then um, Miscellaneous um, opinions of Mansfield Park, opinions of Emma, etc. So, um, anyways, I, I just, I could not resist how beautiful and the spine as well. Um, this was an amazing find for me. I don't see a lot of really, really, um, beautiful collectible books like this. So, um, so anyways, I had to get it. It also has a ribbon bookmark in the middle of it. I love that. And, um, yeah, it's, I own all of Pride and, or all of um, Jane Austen's main works, all of her known works right here. Um, but I definitely want to have these for my collection and then also to read them at some point in my life. So, um, so yeah, I picked this one up. I'm super, super excited. So yeah, I got three amazing classics here um, to to add to my classics collection. I'm definitely in a kind of classics mood actually recently. I've thought about um, picking up another classic. Um, if I can get through some of my other stuff on my TBR, I posted my TBR video and it is quite um, ambitious for me, so we'll see. <laughs> but if I could squeeze in a classic over the summer, um, towards the end of the summer, it would, it would be great. Um, I don't know which one yet, probably another Thomas Hardy is kind of what I'm feeling. Um, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this reading vlog. Um, just to give an update on reading, I read a lot more over the weekend. Um, I read a lot more in Career of Evil specifically, and then um, a little bit more, I think about 100 pages more in um, Paint the Wind, and uh, still just loving it. Honestly, five stars for both of them so far. Uh, so it's, it's been great. I've loved my time reading these books. Um, I'm almost done with Slightly Wicked as well on audio and I'm trying to decide what I need to read next. Um, I actually put out like a little bit of a poll situation, not a poll, but just asking people if they could chime in on what to prioritize because all of my Libby holds or all of my Libby books are coming due soon. And I have so many that I'm looking forward to and that I really want to get to. So I'm trying to figure out which one to prioritize. Um, I think it'll probably be It Happened One Autumn because I've been waiting for so long for that book. So that will probably be my next audio. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Um, please let me know down below if you did, um, if there are any books I mentioned that you're excited to read or um, just how your week's going. I would love to hear. Um, but with all that being said, please like and comment and subscribe if you want to see more from me and i will see you guys in another video bye